This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Always good to see Ben Shalom. Um, yeah, especially after a night like that. Um, yeah, obviously, main talking point, Adam Azim defeating O'Hara Davis in a, in a real, real solid performance where he went through the gears. Um, overall, caps are, you know, a, a solid, solid card that, that we saw there. Yeah, very good card. I think um, right from the start, I knew there was going to be upsets tonight. I didn't know exactly which fights, but I knew they were they were all really look, sort of 50-50 fights. Obviously, Michael McKinson came short, knew that was going to be very tough against Talani Talan and Bange, and so it should be for the IBO world title. Got it for him, um, but that sometimes goes that way. I thought Fran Hennessy, if anyone's not seen that performance, go back and watch that. That was superb, like really superb. I was... Uh, Thinking Mick Hennessy had gone mad with the matchmaking. I thought I he'd, I thought he'd if lost. If you saw the odds, mate, they, they shortened quite a lot. So. I thought he'd lost the plot. I thought, bloody hell, Mick, you know, because Mick loves his fighters. But then with his daughter, it's like another level. So I thought, <laughs> is this like, because she's 19 and she's still growing, you know, she's still becoming a woman. Um, and so I see this opponent come in on Tuesday from Mick and I'm thinking, what? Then obviously it comes for a title. And then even yesterday, and I'm just being honest, I was saying to him, Mick, like there's no need, you know, there's no need. To, like no, not, nothing against like, nothing same with Fran. And it's just 19 years old, limited fights. You're taking on a real killer and actually someone that no one wants to fight. I mean, she beat Shannon Courtney's opponent comfortably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that the fight, like, just touch that out, like with Fran, is that, you'd like to make that fight, the, the, the opponent who beat Shannon Courtney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's disrespectful, yeah, I'm no, not saying no, that. No, no, I wanted to, to be honest, I'd like to do the Shannon fight, I think it's a big name, but anyway, I, what all I'm saying is, long story short, watch Fran's performance because it was actually magnificent. Magnificent. She was in there against this seriously strong girl, sticking it on her. Um, and I don't want to make the whole interview about her, but I thought it was it was special. And every, and, and and it's and it's not just Mick, you know. With his, she she's special. She really is. I'm, I'm I'm concerned about how quickly she could go through the division because there's not many fighters better than the one she faced tonight. And uh, yeah, really special performance and a boxing masterclass. And yeah, as I say, if you if you, you should go back and watch that. Um, yeah. On Adam Azim there with the performance that you put in, I think it's fair to say, you know, after sort of very, sorry. I just nearly forgot. Jamie TKB. I thought that was a great performance as well in a, in a fight where it was a little um, messy at times, but delighted for him. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just touch on, on Adam Azim. I think if you, you look back sort of the mid route, obviously the mid months of like May, June, sort of April after the sort of the Dalton Smith saw and everything that happened with Harlem Eubank, um, there was definitely a lot of maybe scrutiny sort of towards Adam, the team and yourself. Um, how crucial was it tonight that you put in a performance like to send sort of a message to, to the other guys domestically at one for we, especially obviously the Dalton Smith to say, you know, no matter what you think, this is what I can do. Look, we know Adam, for us, Adam Azim beats Dalton Smith now, and we, we're really confident with the fight. It's just Adam's on his own trajectory, on his own path, building, and doesn't need anyone, and he's going to have loads calling him out. I think we see benefit for both guys in taking the fight at the right time. The right time's coming soon, and they're going to make, a, hopefully, a fortune, not just a big payday, as Shane said, but a potential life-changing payday. And, and that means Adam needs to develop, Dalton's still getting better, but... For me, Adam Azim showed tonight. It was just superb, honestly. It was he gets better and better, but he gets better when the better the opponent. I thought O'Hara came in really sharp, really ready, really fast, um, in in the sense that he was always dangerous and, and and he prepared really well. And I hope he doesn't call it a day because he took a lot of punishment there early on as well and, and was able to come through it and was able to always be dangerous and I was just saying never seen O'Hara in live and I've heard about his long rangey shots and he can catch you from anywhere and I thought Adam with his feet his movement absolutely everything was uh, it was it was a, it was a pleasure to watch at times it really was an, um, an absolute massive night for Adam Azim massive night I was I was nervous because 22 year old kid up I've said it before going in headline on our sky sports I get nervous for that um, but he dealt with it so well well and, and by the time he, he looked in the ring he was so calm in a flow state and uh, yeah what a, what a what a man what a star that we've got and um, 
yeah, really, really happy. Uh, quickly touch on Dan Aziz. Um, a night you, you had a really good journey with Dan, but I think it's fair to say 2024 is a year you definitely want to forget. Um, obviously, defeat against Boatsy, defeat tonight, and the, the sort of less than impressive performance against Savory set. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, everyone loves Dan, so it's quite dis obviously it was happy for Louis. Dan's such a likable guy. So. Yeah, I will say I'm really happy for Louis Edmondson, um, who has worked hard for his opportunity and jumped up massive levels tonight and performed really well. I do think it, it was a very close fight. I, I have to agree. Really, I know a lot of people online, but I, I thought Louis did nick it, um, and I thought he did well. Um, obviously gutted for Dan, and boxing's a cruel sport, and it can pick you up and throw you down, and, and we know that, but you know, he, he needs to come back and do some soul searching. It was difficult, I, w I wanted to give him a, a, another big opportunity, and, and I'll continue to support Dan Aziz, but Really happy for Louis Emerson and his team because they, they, deserve, uh, they deserve their moment, and we have a new British champion. Just quickly moving on from tonight, and uh, uh, I guess a, a quickly moving saga. Obviously, yourself um, uh, with the, the the sort of the situation with yourself and Frank Warren. Obviously, after the the, the situation with Fabio Fabio Wally's gloves. Um, obviously, I spoke to you yesterday. I spoke to Frank Warren after speaking to that, and he says he was saying that you know, the more he talks, the less it's going to the more it's going to cost him. Obviously, um, insinuating a lawsuit, um, and yeah, he was sort of. Questioning your knowledge of boxing, he says the more he sort of comes up with, the more I know, uh, the more I think, we, the more I think he doesn't know about the sport. Um, yeah, what is sort of the solution? Is there worries about sort of legal ramifications coming for Frank Warren? No, not from me. Um, Frank loves to, to dish that out, but I think ultimately this was nothing to do with Fabio doing any wrongdoing, and this was nothing to do with, with Frank Warren or any wrongdoing there. This was concerns and questions that were put to me from from teams and medical professionals and things like that that we have to raise and that was it um, and I still we, we we were past those concerns maybe we should, we should have kept it you know private and etc etc but it's, uh, they were genuine concerns put to us nothing accusing of wrongdoing and, and Fabio deserves all the credit in the world and I want to say in, 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 I've seen Fabio and, and Frank respond Fabio won that fight fair and square and did absolutely nothing wrong and everything was in the rules and it was passed by the board that doesn't mean that I don't get questions and that's all it is Did Adam Azim not wearing fly gloves today did that have anything to do with what happened? Look I don't want to get into that because there's a lot of people in boxing that, that probably see things and know things as well but I'm happy with Adam Azim's performance um, and regardless of what gloves he won. Final one for myself, I'm going to sign off on a good note. Um, yesterday, big announcement, uh, Riyadh season partnership with Boxer. Um, long time coming, but, but really, really big news for yourself. Yeah, massive, um, massive news. And I uh, yeah, have to thank His Excellency and Riyadh season. What they're doing for boxing is incredible, but equally they need to be praised for, for the, the, the fact that they don't get involved in politics because that's what's held our sport back for so long. So when you've got the major power player who doesn't get himself involved and you've seen Oscar doing his own show and Eddie and Frank doing their show and now Boxer planning to, 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 to do some big things as well, you, you have to admire it because it's going to help the sport massively and hopefully it will bring and, and resolve differences. I mean, you've seen how quickly the Eubank Frank thing got cleared up and, and hopefully um, he can continue and I'm sure he will this be a massive positive influence but for us it just shows their commitment to British boxing as well as world boxing and uh, yeah it's amazing to, to partner with them. Ben always a pleasure mate appreciate it well on tonight. Thank you man cheers.